Today, we're talking about life-changing tips on how to shop efficiently, particularly for clothing. This is coming from someone who struggled with shopping addiction leading up to her 30s. Well, me. I struggled with decision fatigue in my wardrobe because I had so many clothes that I didn't even really want to wear. This is not me. It's too young. It's too juvenile. This first tip might annoy you. I know online shopping is so convenient and there's so many more options. If you're anything like me, you are sick of shopping downtown. Montreal downtown sucks now because everything is closing down. It's a recession. It has to be said. Shopping in person is a completely different experience and shopping online and I highly recommend that whenever it is possible for you to actually go to the physical store that carries the brand or similar items to what you are actually intending on purchasing, do it. Just do it. Like for instance, if it's Zara or H&M, you can go into the shop and feel the fabric before you buy. Because in my case, there have been times where I have read the material description and it has not felt the way that I thought it would. All right, let me give you an anecdote. I am shopping for bikinis at the moment and I was looking at this brand called Maggi. The bathing suits look fantastic online, but I have no idea what the sizing is about. I don't know what the fabrics look like. I went to Simon's and Bikini Village and I am so glad I did because I would have ordered a medium instead of a large because ugh, vanity sizing. The other reason why this was super useful to me is I got to know a little bit more of what the brand's styles and cuts are. So I tried on various pieces and a few different sizes. Whenever you are able to go and shop in person, just do it. Tip number two is be very wary of sales. Be careful. Buy one, get the second one 50% off is really get a maximum of 25% off. That's only if the two items are exactly the same price because they always half off the one that is cheaper. I think a good way to not shop sales compulsively is to really set an intention before you go shopping or before you go into a shop. I'm going there to buy a dress in this color that is in this cut for this purpose. Have an idea of what you want. It's sort of like having a shopping list. When you go to the grocery store and you're planning on making a recipe, you usually look through your pantry and your fridge to make sure that you're not going to be buying redundant items or repeats. And you should do the same with your closet. Tip number three is going to be to keep tags and receipts because you never know when you might decide to return something. I've had this really negative experience buying a pair of boots that were the last in-store shoe of that particular kind. People had tried it on, so there were some scratch marks under the shoe, but it wasn't dirty or anything, and I tried to return it. At Little Burgundy, they, they didn't want to take it back. I had to go to another store and haggle there, and unless I'm very sure that I'm gonna keep the item, I won't buy the display item because I just don't want to go through that ordeal. If you are enjoying this video so far and you're finding these tips helpful, you know what to do. Click the like button and you can subscribe if you'd like to see videos from me every Sunday. Tip number four, I touched on this a little bit before, but really, I mean it. Take inventory of your wardrobe, but more so than just writing, oh, I've got, you know, three cardigans, black, blue, and green. No, take inventory of what are the items that you wear the most? what would you get the most use out of? In my case, I don't wear a lot of light clothing, so I'm not going to spend a lot of money on white shirts, for instance. It's just not going to happen. However, if I really like a basic, like for instance, I got these long sleeve shirts from Old Navy. I don't love them, but they're extremely warm and practical for the winter time, and they're a great layering piece. I bought it in three colors because it was on sale. I got dark gray, a light blue, and and cream white. All that to say, if there's a basic that you really adore and the other colors go on sale and they're still available in your size, if you think you would get use out of it, just buy it. It should be okay. Tip number five, and this is something 
this is something that irks me don't buy clothes if you don't already have the underwear for it so for instance don't buy strapless tops if you don't have the strapless bra to wear with it unless you can go braless good for you girl take advantage of that take advantage of those nip slips because that doesn't look good on everyone and it kind of depends on the context of the shirt right for me i feel a lot more secure with a strapless and i have one from wonder bra and i have a review on it on my bra channel heck 80 percent of people are not wearing the right size and that is something that can ruin your outfit if you need assistance on that go check out my bra channel i'll link that down below so you can go check it out after this video but it is imperative to have three workhorse bras and then maybe a strapless or a multi-way bra for undergarments oh this is groundbreaking this changed my life okay i don't wear spanks or anything like that not because i'm uppity about it but if you wear high-waisted underwear with your dresses if it fits you right, it's like wearing Spanx. If you're wearing low-waisted pants, wear low-waisted underwear. Mid-rise, mid-rise underwear. And if you're wearing a dress or something high-rise, go for the high-waisted underwear. And it makes the world of a difference. If you are buying clothes in the store, you gotta try them on properly, okay? You need to take a bunch of pictures of yourself, front and back. I know it's annoying, it takes a little bit long, but no, just, just take like three or four pictures of what you look like in the item so that you have a little bit of an impression of what it's going to look like on you. Do you feel comfortable in it? Does it look good in the mirror from different angles? Not just like a pretty pose selfie in the mirror. No, 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 get some unflattering shots too, why not? And on that note, make sure you move around in the clothes. If I'm buying pants, I'm sitting down, squatting in them. I can't be wearing tight, uncomfortable things. Buy clothes that you're comfortable living in. It makes the world of a difference. You'll be more confident. It translates. And the energy that you bring into the room when you're wearing something that not only looks good, but feels comfortable. If you have a difficult time making decisions about clothing items, bring a friend that you trust. Not the friend who is indecisive and not like, damn girl, you look amazing in that or don't buy that and is just like, mm, I don't know, whatever you want. No, 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 no. For me, it's my mom. My boyfriend's actually okay too. Heck, he picks out things sometimes for me that end up being things that I like better than the things I've picked out for myself. Some people are good at pinpointing something that will slightly take you out of your comfort zone, but also matches the way that you look. We're not all blessed with girlfriends that are good at giving constructive advice on clothing items that we purchase and what have you. But if you find that friend, Ooh, go shopping with them. Go shopping with them, girl. Shop off season. The amount of times I've bought dresses on sale at Zara and Mango, there's still some of the items that I love the most. Oh, and French Connection. I used to get fantastic dresses at French Connection. Those were the days. Crazy popular trends. Hmm, maybe they sell out before the end of the season. Maybe not. But if it's something that you want to explore, like I'm contradicting myself a little bit, but at the same time, no, because if there's something that you really love, invest in it. However, if it's just a trend that you're unsure of, maybe don't blow all of your coins on it and see if you can get it on sale. When you can get cash back, do it. In my case, there are some items that I'm eyeing at Simon's, AKA the Maggi bikini that is full price, but it's on Rakuten and it's 2% cash back. I'm gonna buy it there and then I'm gonna pick it up at the store rather than buying it in the store and not really getting much of anything. Like only getting the Simon's points, but not getting the cash back. Don't overspend, but it's an option to get a little bit of money back when you can. I know we haven't talked about it as much and I do agree that it's nice to support local businesses and yeah, heck, I need to save some money sometimes. 
but just know that places like Aritzia and Dynamite, which are under the same ownership, they have sales items that are not available in store online. It's something I've noticed. Items that I've bought full price have gone on sale relatively quickly online. So that's something to look into. Always compare online and offline prices. Another store I noticed that had a lot of discrepancies between online and offline prices is Gap. I don't really shop there anymore because they shut down downtown, but that's another store where I would constantly get things on promotion in store. There was always an extra 40% off in store, but then you'd go online and it was like, so much more money for the same article of clothing and there was no extra rebate online or anything like that. I suggest you check out the video that I have linked up on the screen right here for more about shopping addiction and emotional shopping and how to stop doing it because it's annoying, right? I wanna save money now and buy responsibly.